Hello, Darren. Hi, Darren. Darren, Darren, Darren. Today, yep. we're going to talk about guitar legend uh, Steve Vai. I can't Steve think Vai. of anything I would prefer than that yeah, right now. Are. But before we do that, what have you been up to? I bought a new rubber. I've and got one of them. New pencil sharpener. And uh, I suppose it's not quite an unboxing video, but I thought we could do a, an unwrapping video. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, nice. doesn't that feel nice? See, it's like it's, like it's uh, lit by stage lighting as well with that sun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the sun's right here, but it, I don't think it affects what we're seeing here. Yeah. Well, the, the, the rubber was sparkling with the, uh, the rubber. Uh, um, yeah, I've got a new rubber uh, and uh, pencil sharpener. Uh, the, yeah. well, perhaps we should talk about our tools more often. Uh, here we have a uh, Peanuts pencil with uh, oh, right. new P. Lucy. Uh, hold on, what's his sister called? No idea. Sally. Sally, Lucy, Charlie Brown, and Snoopy. Oh, actually, no. Down here, we've got uh, Marcy. There you go. You've done very what, have you been, what have you been doing this week? Well, I'm, uh, I'm trudging through an autobiography, not an autobiography, sorry, a biography of Johann Sebastian Bach, and it is heavy going. Uh, there's a lot of uh, musical analysis in it. Um, I'm okay. averaging about 40 pages, no, 20 pages in 40 minutes, which feels so what, you, there's There's bits in this bio biography that are like, oh, and then on this, you'll see he modulates to a G minor and uses a Mixolydian yeah. mode. Loads of that, loads of that. And then I've got a feeling you've got a bit better theory than me, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, I Thanks. still, I've not got enough... <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, difficult, I've read. Difficult. I've only read one book uh, like that, and it was uh, uh, John Coltrane, something like his life and his music. Yeah, and it was yeah, yeah exactly the same, you know. And then John brought, um, you know, uh, three kilos of smack and started hanging out with Felonius Monk. That's <laughs> what you want to read about, isn't it? But no. <laughs> <laughs> but not before he transposed uh, the, the solo into Mixolydian mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've been reading that. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing it, because after that I'm going to read the, the book by uh, Michael Han, Denim and Leather, about oh! the uh, new uh, British heavy metal. Are you? Okay, yeah. I'm going to read it as well, because I've, I've been trying to get... Um, my friend Andy to read it with me and why don't right. all three of us read it and we'll do a, a bit of a book club on it or maybe we'll yes. even do something here on it but also it's uh, uh, it's interesting to me as well because um, I do know Michael a little bit yeah. I mean not yeah. like best mates or anything but we're, we're Facebook friends and, and talk so um, uh, yeah that, that's a good thing to talk about so I suppose that kind of brings us on to um well what my friend uh, my friend david used to call when we were young poodle headed yeah. plank spankers <laughs> poodle herd <laughs> oh yeah poodle poodle head i think that is what he said poodle actually. headed i love that's that. even better though isn't it yeah yeah it is yeah uh yeah <laughs> i don't think uh, steve Vai does have a uh, poodle po po a poodle head um no, Does he? our poodle hair, fairly um, mm. just long and black. Um, um, yeah. So uh, last week, well, actually, the truth of the matter is, uh, Teague and Christmas introduced both of us to uh, Connie Converse, but I suppose it was me introducing you to Connie Converse. Quite but this right. week, you've been introducing me to the music and stylings of Steve Vai. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why, but it got propped up in conversation, didn't it? So Steve Vai, who was he? Who is he? So with us, isn't he? Um, to his guitar player, he's American. 
Uh, God, he's 62 now. My word. Uh, and he's best known for being David Lee Roth's guitar player when David Lee Roth left Van Halen. And so I suppose he, I mean, I, I, I don't know much about my rock family trees, but I guess I'm, I might as well say what I do know. Yeah. So that means he would have probably been having to um, almost immediately be the match of Eddie Van Halen, who was Van Halen's guitarist, right? He had a big, uh, a big pair of shoes to fill. Yeah, he did. He already had a reputation. I think by then as being a quite the guitar hotshot. So, uh, and he also had uh, a massive amount of confidence. Um, so I don't think he would have found it particularly daunting to to fill those uh, those boots. No, no, he 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 he. He has the stance of, of one of life's winners, I would say, in the few things I've looked at. He does, yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but he first he he started out as a music student in Berkeley, which is a very famous uh, music university college in uh, San Francisco. Um, and when he was eighteen, he sent some transcriptions of Frank Zappa solos to Frank Zappa. And Frank Zappa was very impressed with them and so hired him to transcribe a load more um, guitar and drum parts for him. So that was his first job. And he then kind of started, uh, he became part of Frank Zappa's live band and recording band. Why would, uh, yeah. why would Frank Zappa need his own parts transcribed? I don't know. I don't know if Frank could transcribe them or maybe he was just too busy. I mean, I suppose uh, I do. And you could tell. I suppose I do have to transcribe my songs sometimes. So perhaps that's a bit of a stupid question. But I mean, often you, you know, you don't need to transcribe them because you know them and you just play them. But I suppose if you yeah. get new people in, you need them transcribed, yeah. maybe. Um, Frank's lineup was probably changing constantly. Because he was such an agreeable man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so, let's, not get, yeah let, let's, well let's, let's, let's not get sidetracked from Frank Zappa because, you know, I'm sure we both have lots to say about him. I, I, I don't know enough, but I know bits that, yeah, maybe there's an episode in there. A bit of research for us. The future could be interesting. Well, um, I mean, I think what would it, that would be, uh, You know, that would be quite the conversion program on me. I mean, uh, uh, me, me too. I mean, nothing, nothing has ever, nothing has ever suggested to me anything less than he's a horrible human being. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see. See. Uh, um, uh, but, anyways, but let's not hold that Steve. against Steve Vai yet. Steve Vai. So after Frank Zappa, he went on to play with a band called Alcatraz. And th this is where I really like his work. Um, Alcatraz were fronted by a singer called, uh, a British singer called Graham Bonnet, who sang with Rainbow, sang Since You've Been Gone all night long. Right. Um, so well known, short haired British rocker who pops up in the Michael Hand book, actually. That's going to be interesting. Um, and uh, they did a cracking album called Disturbing the Peace, uh, which had the single God Bless Video, which was quite popular on, on uh, not YouTube, on MTV. God forums. Bless Video? Yeah. Well, as in, I don't even know what that would mean. <laughs> God Blessed Video. So, God blessed it. God blessed video. Well, they're just like praising B for Betamax machines. <laughs> Who knows? The lyrics are quite um, cynical. It's kind of an anti MTV song, funnily enough. Oh. I'm saying that you you don't have to be 
good musically anymore or even interesting musically. You just right. have to have a, a good video. So it's quite a that's cynical quite, song. That's quite a that's quite a sort of genre in itself to talk about, isn't it? When rock stars um, do songs about how rock isn't as good as it was when they made it. Yeah, possibly, <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think Van Morrison yeah. only records that song now. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Van Morrison records. And ironically, God Blessed Video had kind of quite an amusing video to go with it. Um, so they were, they were actually playing playing the game. Yeah, but from a yeah from a Alcatraz, which is a it's a great album, disturbing the piece. If you like um, shiny rock, uh, and there are it's the first real sightings of Steve Vai's guitar um, stunts, you would say. Quite a, a very flashy player. Um, and then, yeah, so Dave Lee Roth recruited him when he left Van Halen. And this is where Steve Vai then just became as big a star as David Lee Roth in the, in the rock world. Anyone who was a fan of Dave Lee Roth knew who Steve Vai was and, and loved him. He was very, um, I called him when I was telling, suggesting we do this video. I think I called him a, a, a cartoon guitar player who, who is yeah. kind of perfect to be playing with a cartoon rock star like Dave Lee Roth. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, really I would, agree, with I would agree with this. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know when to come in, really. I feel I want you to talk a bit more. Well, tell, well can, you, can, you tell, can you can you can you can you explain to me and the viewers um, yeah. what it is you get from, or, or or actually even even more so because we obviously because we can't be bothered to work, working out how to do the copyright thing, we can't play him here. We'll put some links. Yeah, but could yeah. you could could you um, try and describe to us more what his guitar playing is like, but also. Whilst doing that, try and uh, describe what you get from it. Well, he's playing. Um, it's harmonically very interesting. He chooses some rather interesting uh, scales and combinations of notes. There's vague, vaguely Eastern. Um, he's very he's quite an incendiary guitar player. High volume, uh, lots of very fast, fast runs, um, almost like torrents of notes. A lot of people, I'm going to might get you back up here, but a lot of people would possibly compare him to John Coltrane in that respect. Some of the very fast runs of notes. That What's that? Notes. What is that expression that they that he John Coltrane used himself? And it is in that book I read about John Coltrane's music. Something like sheets of music, sheets right. of notes. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, like Coltrane. I can't remember what it was. Sheets of sound. Right. I mean, that's what it was. That's and quite I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't entirely understand what he means by that, but it was an expression that Coltrane was using to describe where he was trying to get to. I, I see that. That makes sense to me. And that's a good way of describing both Coltrane and Vi without without necessarily comparing them to each other. Yeah, I remember another thing uh, that you read about uh, Coltrane saying is that he was he was desperately uh, trying to get away from scales, right? That all all soloing was essentially running up a scale and running down a scale. Yeah. And 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 he was trying to get to somewhere else, and I sort of know what he means. I mean, I, I'm I'm ve really not a soloist at all. I mean, if you have, if you've seen me do a guitar solo on stage, you're you're in about five percent of the audience. I normally get someone better in to do that stuff. <laughs> Although, having said that, every now and then yeah. I do have a go, and there are some yeah. out there on records. 
And even when I'm trying to do it, I am also trying to think a little bit the same. Because sometimes yeah. it's go up a bit, go down a bit, go yeah. up a bit further, faster a bit, end on the highest note. <laughs> so, and sometimes that's the way to do it. <laughs> I find it interesting that you mentioned about control, uh, culture and saying wanting to get away from scales and that. Um, because Steve Vai does use a lot of scales and exotic scales, but there is also that element that you get with um, sax players, especially back then, um, of just making sounds. And there, there are a lot of times when Steve Vai is just making noises with the guitar uh and you, you, it's hard to say that it's a scale or anything it's just this um frenzied kind of sound uh, yeah between solos, he goes a little bit crazy in so yeah so so i think at this point it's perhaps worth saying that the thing i watched just half an hour ago yeah before uh starting this video you gave me a playlist of songs i was listening to last week yeah and then uh you've, you you gave me a video of a solo performance let's say that that is definitely the first link below us okay yeah, this yeah. video and so if somebody will if you want to stop this video now and go and watch that and then you'll then you'll have what darren saw yeah towards the end he does start doing that he does start doing textural things and he starts making sounds and he uses the that he has one of those presumably has one of those whammy bars which completely slackens off the string so you can do almost Does like oh make it all go down there i don't know why yeah. i sounded like one of the the wurzels when i did it but um <laughs> and so yeah there was some textual stuff not not nearly enough for me, actually. I mean, I would say that I, I, I'm certain he is using Eastern scales. I'm certain he is sort of uh, doing some theoretical, uh, interesting stuff. But yeah. I would say, you know, he's no, he's no John Zorn or, you know, even he's not even a Thurston Moore or a Lou Reed in terms of, or, or, or dare I say it, a Derek Bailey. In, 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 in terms of like deconstructing the guitar, I mean, Absolutely. I think he, I think he is making sounds, but all he's really doing is, you know, messing with the settings of of what the the uh, pedal does or whatever, or or doing what the whammy bar does. I don't. I mean, I, I thought it. What's, what what do we call that te technique where he's taking the pick in hand? Uh, off altogether, and he's just doing that, and the sound's still coming out. Is that it's, called hammer? you, it's hammering? It's hammering on, on and pulling off, yeah. Uh, and it creates a, a, a the musical term for the sound you get would be legato. It's the right. same where a, a, a violinist would be playing several notes in yeah. one, one block. because because hammering um, on hammering on and pulling off is also uh, that rather seedy website where I first met you as well, isn't it? That's that's right. Yeah, yeah. We don't mm. talk about that anymore, though. Yeah. Okay, edit that bit out. <laughs> um, so so yeah, I thought. Well, oh, you asked you asked me what on. I get from yeah, yeah. watching Steve Vai and that, and that's that's the more interesting interesting bit for me because. Sometimes I get incredibly annoyed and turn it off. <laughs> Sometimes what I get, um, I get, I rarely listen to Steve Vai's solo stuff. I've got two of his solo albums and maybe they get played like once every two years and then not the whole thing. I can kind of take three or four tracks in a row and then I've got to turn it off. But I do regularly have periods where I will stick his videos on and watch him. And um, I think part of what I get is entertainment, some form of, of amusement. Occasionally I'm laughing at him because he is quite the, the – he pulls guitar god faces had best way to describe them like he's communing with god when he's playing yeah i think the issue um, of 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 laughing at 
or laughing with is 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 kind of where I'm gently nudging you towards. Right, because yeah. I mean, I'm presuming one of our, at least one of our listeners has now watched the video. Uh, one of our viewers has watched the video. It's now back with us. I mean, there's a real absurdity to, to what he's doing as well, isn't there? I I think there is. I think there is. Yeah, and that's where I think when it's coupled with someone like David Lee Roth, it, it really really works. Uh, when <laughs> When yeah. he's removed from that and he's on his own, I don't think it works quite as well. That's interesting. I, don't, I wonder, trying to think whether I agree or not. Um, there was there was one song you sent, something about the good times. I remember in yeah, all that's the Yeah, that's the mellow Dave Lee Roth one, that. And I thought... It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I thought it was really, really. Will this do? Phoned in lyrics. It was almost like he was just talking to someone in a room, and even that conversation wasn't that great. Like someone was saying, "Do you remember when we used to go drinking?" Oh yeah. Oh, we're great friends, me and you, aren't we? Yeah. That's and like, there were pauses in the conversation. Like that's how good the conversation was that he has decided. I think this awkward conversation about how we used to be younger is is the basis of a song. <laughs> but I think that, like, I don't know. I think that Steve Vai's absurdity on his own in that video, and and alongside. David Lee Roth. I, I, I feel like two wrongs don't make a right. I think I might disagree <laughs> with you. I think I much more enjoyed seeing Steve Vai totally on his own because when I was when I was listening to Steve Steve Vai and David Lee Roth, to be honest, David Lee Roth's <laughs> absurdity was distracting a little bit from Steve Vai's <laughs> absurdity. <laughs> I think I like I like Steve Vai when he's contained though. He's less of the front figure when he's with David Lee Roth. So right, yeah. Sometimes yeah. he's got to be a supporting character, um, and that's where I prefer his 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 work generally. Um, and so the other phrase is gone. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I do well, I do enjoy watching his videos though, and just just laughing. Sometimes I'm I'm laughing because I can't believe he's managed to play what he's just played. It, it's so it looks so complex and difficult, and there is there's no doubting that whatever you, you may think of his um, musical taste, his um, technical ability is is probably uh, yeah uh, okay. without uh, comparison. Uh, right. right, yeah, yeah, okay, let's. Goodness, there's so much to talk about there, though. Yes, yes, you're right. Whether that whatever matters. you think of, you, whatever you think of his, uh, the taste of what he's doing, you cannot deny the 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 the, the ability, you know, the, the the technical dexterity of what he's doing, but. I don't know, like, w with him, like, technique is so joined to what you think of it musically. Like, they, 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 aren't, they aren't even two different things. Yeah. Like, what you think of it musically and what you think of it technically are so joined because what it is is a lesson in technical ability isn't it and the sound itself is the sound of technical ability yeah do you understand what i'm yeah. saying i mean i think yeah, I, I think do, so, yeah. so, so in a way so in a way i think well actually no i can still say that i don't like that technical ability or how it's been used i don't know it's an interesting one i was thinking about i was watching that clip and i was thinking about the audience and i was thinking yeah. about how 
the, the sustaining of a show like that. The song's about, I think, about five minutes long, and it actually starts kind of as a ballad. Uh, very still, even in the first minutes, he's doing stuff which you know very few guitarists can do. But then the 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 bar is is raised and raised, which I think is 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 presumably why you sent it to me because it just gets funnier and funnier. And his right. face yeah. funnier. Yeah. And, and did you, did you notice does. the bit where he he mid solo he brushes his hair back? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I mean, I mean, this is, I mean, this this is. This is uh, this is one thing I would say about it. That in in an age where we all we want to do is scrub a video along, I definitely at no point scrubbed that video along. You know, I, I right. was you know I was gripped <laughs> and yeah. I was laughing. <laughs> but I was thinking about I was thinking about I got got really into watching free improv jazz uh, a few years ago. I would go to Cafe Oto and the Vortex, and I didn't completely understand what I was watching, but right. I was watching the strangest, most uh, uh, oddest uh, music. And I had a, a friend there that I, I, I sort of knew vaguely, and he would sometimes go with me. And he was much more of an aficionado of me than me of that music. And there was one time we were talking about something and he said of the player, oh yeah, that is a strong performance, wasn't it? He, he performed well. And I realized he was using sort of sport language <laughs> to describe yeah. music. Yeah. And, and, I was, and I think that's kind of what I was thinking about the the possible audience in that video and like what are you watching here are you watching a feat are you watching a feat of stamina and practice and 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 it's okay i'm not even saying that's wrong i mean i can, I can understand how you might think my tone is a little bit condescending but like i'm thinking there's something other than music going on here there's something about like look what this guy um can do isn't it amazing watching what this guy can do yeah not yeah. unlike watching a weightlifter or a very fast runner yeah yeah um and i suppose and and i hear and, and now i suppose i'm finally sort of um showing my colors here a bit if i i mean you've probably got a hint of my colors already <laughs> um and i suppose ultimately that loses me like i find the phenomenon of it interesting and i found that video interesting but ultimately i feel like what i'm watching is just practice yeah yeah and i think that and, that, and that's unfortunately what i think about sport and which is probably a more contentious thing to say and probably more people will annoy that but but i often think when someone runs fast okay i mean well done that took a lot of practice well done it, <laughs> uh, so you know uh, um but so i suppose also what i'm asking you is there's got to be more than that for you though hasn't there i mean i mean are there things he's composed where you think oh i love the beauty of this composition i mean it there is you, you there is art there yeah for you yeah there is um did i send you a, a, on that playlist was there a track called for the love of god I think the product there must have been if there um, wasn't i will i mean i'll, I'll I, I will definitely go back to it and and listen to it i mean it might not inform this conversation but i want to give so, everything a fair go it was on actually yeah for, so for the love of god i like the tune i think it's a good tune it's dramatic um i like how it builds and builds and builds until it gets to a point where the playing is really frenzied. Um, right. So I, I do, musically, I do like that. Uh, and there are all, all through his solo things, there are musical bits that I enjoy. I enjoy the strange harmonies um, because I can't, I don't really recognise those, those sounds from anywhere else but his music. Well, I mean, another another analogy to when I was going to the um, 
these free jazz performances is is that what I liked about it was that I couldn't emulate it. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm going to see, uh, you know, an indie band or, or a friend, sometimes my brain doesn't stop working. Sometimes I'm still assessing and I'm yeah. still sort of comparing them to me and thinking, Oh, I know what you did there. You did that minor to major chord. Oh, you know, good, good, good lyric. But, yeah. but I'm not completely lost in it. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. when I went to see jazz, I, I, I kind of thought I will never be able to do this. It's completely beyond me. And when I'm seeing proper free improv, I'm also thinking I don't even really understand whether I like it or not. I don't even understand what I'm doing here. Yeah. But in inside that is 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 quite a nice feeling. It's like oh, my brain isn't working. I'm just experiencing music. I'm not trying yeah. to destruct it for my own gain or whatever. And I wondered, is, is there something like that inside Steve Vai for you, like a, a guy think, doing I music that you would? Yeah, I think there is. Um, that it's, it's that it's coupled. There is, you know, it does coupled with the fact that I do find quite often his music can be very harsh on the ears, which is why I only listen to like two or three songs. And, yeah, but also but- that's kind of like free jazz as well. You know, it's it's heavy going, isn't it? It's hard work. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I found it reasonably accessible. I do take your point on about um, scales and stuff, and I do take your point on sounds. But I never found, I thought his sa- guitar sounded, for want of a better word, nice. Right. Like, I think he has a kind of a very, mu- I think he's very, I, don't, I think he's very musical. If someone's yeah. watched this far and still hasn't heard him, you know, I would, I would, I wouldn't doubt his musicality um i do have i do have i do have one observation though which i, I think would obviously be would, would perhaps be in my um like my rev- my 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 review or something or if i was writing this if i was trying to be a rock journo uh, I, yeah. I, I made a visual and musical observation in that clip is wearing like a a, a, a um a black jacket it's, it's, that's it right. looks like it might be 80s or 90s but it's quite baggy yeah and he has no shirt on early 90s i reckon that is yeah, yeah. and there's this thing where where i think he's like, i really see it when i go on the continent sometimes and which isn't to say that we don't have ugly clothes in this country but when you see ugly rich people's clothes they always have uh-huh. unnecessary embellishments. So you go into, a, like, you see a really posh clothes shop and they have a normal jacket, but it'll have some ridiculous gold braiding on it, which is completely yeah. unnecessary. Rich people's yeah. glasses are often like this as well. They have normal glasses, but they'll have some, like, silver tips at the end of the thing. So he's yeah. wearing his normal black jacket, but he has yeah. these kind of odd gold spaced out sequins or something on each shoulder pad. Yeah, it's such yeah. a bizarre choice of jacket. But well, it's also I mean, it could be stage wear, couldn't it? Oh, it's definitely stage wear. I mean, it's definitely yeah. stage wear. It's definitely a, a costume. It could have been designed for him. But my point being is, it's an ordinary jacket, yeah. but for these things. And also, <laughs> his guitar is ostensibly an ordinary looking guitar. I mean, you know, it looks very expensive and lovely, except, and now we can look at your picture because we can see this. It's got a fucking handle on it. <laughs> it has, yeah. So actually, that is um, I was reading up on that earlier on. <laughs> the guitar, uh, it's an Ibanez guitar. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a gem. It's called an Ibanez gem. G A E M. I actually and, do um, know this because I was also considering drawing it for this, and I was right. I, I've actually, as well as watching the video, I've read a few technical interviews and as you might right. even see, I'm saying this, I am actually now writing the word Ibanez. Ibanez, on there you go. The Ibanez tube screamer here. Yeah. So um, he, he was basically, he was designing that guitar with, with Ibanez. So it was, um, all the stuff it's got on it. Uh, you'd kind of expect guitarists to ask for, um, you know, he specified the shape. 
Um, he wants to be able to get down right to the bottom of the neck. Um, the fact that I know what you're going to say makes me look forward to it even more because I know what he's going to say at some point. Right. That's so absurd, but carry on. Yeah. <laughs> so he's so he realised that all of the features that he was asking to be put in this guitar would end up being used in other guitars anyway. So he he went for something else that's totally stupid and just said, "Put a handle in it." <laughs> He says, he says, that way, during videos and photo shoots, I could swing the guitar around. <laughs> um, very Which he did very quite fair. a lot. He made it, he used that um, handle, particularly in his Dave Lee Roth videos. They were, they were fun and games. And so I've, I've seen those guitars in guitar shops before and thought, how fucking stupid. <laughs> but what you're telling me now is that isn't that isn't just that Steve Vai likes the guitar with the the handle hole in it. You're telling me no. Steve Vai invented it. Yeah. Okay. He asked for it, and he he also knew that it was stupid. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous. But because don't forget that his music is it's very big uh, and ridiculous in itself there's a i don't know if it's interesting he finds that i think he finds the handle in the guitar funny um does he recognize that his music can also be quite preposterous i'd love to know i'd love to know i i'm not sure he does it really was one of the most preposterous things I've seen in a long time. And yeah, I feel like I, I, I feel like in trying to sort of, you know, like go into this gently, I feel like I've, I've actually perhaps not given a, a good enough impression of what happened when I was watching it. I think, it, <laughs> I think it's, I, th I think he must be on some level uh, aware of the absurdity of what he's doing. Here's what I thought. I thought that it was a sort of music that I'd seen parodied. But yeah, maybe it's the music I've very rarely seen. Like yes, I understand yes. the idea of incredibly virtuoso uh, tap method guitarists who play guitar solos for half an hour with complete musos with five string basses behind them. And I, I knew about this, and I can even say some of the names of people, and I, I understand what we're referencing when we perhaps mock or ridicule that kind of music. But I was watching that video and thinking, I haven't really yet ever seen anything like this. I think I just, like, <laughs> I, I've heard this music described to me. I assumed it wasn't for me, so I've never looked for it. But I went, oh, I'm actually seeing this music now. This is what this music is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I've just realised as well? YouTube's going to suggest more to you now. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind if it did actually. There's there's something um, there's something about my YouTube uh, uh, algorithms. They need to be shaked up because it yeah it, it really is at the moment showing me for the sad sack of shit I am. <laughs> I don't even want, <laughs> and I'm not prepared to say here the sort of things uh, uh, my my YouTube is suggesting to me. But it does not make me look cool. I mean, and I, and you know, and I'd rather it was porn. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather get caught yeah. watching porn than caught watching the mindless shit I'm watching on YouTube. <laughs> which is why, which is why, which is why it confuses me that we don't do better with this. Because that's what I keep saying to you. It's like, I've seen so much worse than this channel and it's got millions of viewers. So why haven't we got them? I would, well, I, yeah, I would, I would really, uh, recommend to people who i mean it seems unlikely that anyone would have got to this point in the video without having not listened to a bit of, of, of steve vibe but if you or didn't know it already but if you don't i reckon i reckon that that video clip you said sent um i reckon that says everything really i think that's that um, that was really good um that was, was really tender that. surrender wasn't it yeah, I'll stick that on video. I forgot about a great that. one. I laughed, I laughed my ass off before it even started. You sent it, and I clicked on it. It was tender surrender. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Good god! Tender there's, surrender. there's another great one. Um, 
I think it's called I Know You're Here or I Know You're There. Uh, and it starts off uh, with a, a Rode bringing out his guitar and Steve Vice sitting on a chair on stage. You think, oh, what's he doing? Why is he sitting down? And this guitar is a, it's a three-necked Ivan S gem. <laughs> and the, the bottom neck is fretless. And it's just, it's just ridiculously, and it's ridiculously stupid. And towards, I think, the in, end I think, in, I think, in a way, the fact that that that, that the one you sent me is like the, the the video you sent me can be so ridiculous, and it's just one guitar. Yeah, do you know what I mean? The fact that it isn't um, a, a free neck guitar or some ridiculous thing. Although I don't know if there's anything I've seen on a guitar that's more ridiculous than that handle. Yeah. I mean, that might be more ridiculous than any extra neck gubbins that anyone else oh. has got going on. <laughs> Wait till you see his new guitar. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's I'll let's put a link to that. The Hydra. <laughs> the Hydra. It's got oh, hold on, on it hold on. Hydra is something with many heads, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Like loads of necks and heads. Yeah, loads. Right. Yeah, right. totally stupid. I um, see. This sounds to me like this is a guy with a sense of humour. If he's if he's yeah, calling a guy high. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I, read little... inter- I read a technical. I read a technical interview just to tell and and just to tell everyone what this is because people might not know. This is an Ibanez tube screamer, which actually I kind of it's the mini version. I can imagine like Steve. I yes. probably doesn't use the mini version, but I I just I thought that was a a, a very kind of very pleasing shape to draw yeah it's quite cute that yeah very good maybe i should buy one maybe that should be the outcome of this i I have been thinking about buying a new pedal for my record perhaps i should buy an ibanez tube screamer well yeah they they don't the uh the name is kind of deceptive because they can be fairly subtle so yeah like i say i don't think he's i don't think he sounds abrasive i i sort of i don't think he is hard to listen to I think, uh, that, I think maybe that kind, that, that when you that listen- kind of that kind of um, flowing thing when he's going up and down the neck is quite yeah. pleasing in a way. It, he's very yeah. he's very in tune. He's not atonal in the way that like to go back to no, comparison no. with uh, John Coltrane. Yeah. Oh, can we can can we put on the title on this something like? Is Steve Vai better than Coltrane or something? I reckon that'd be quite clickbaity. Can we do something like that? <laughs> Offer it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I find uh, maybe a breadth is the wrong word. Uh, listening to several tunes in a row is like eating a, a lot of cake at once. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 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 No, that, 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 that I can understand. I, 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 did not, I did not have the appetite for a whole album. No, no. That's, that's difficult. Um, one of the little snippet, uh, you may not know this, he also played on Rise by Public Image Limited. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. Is there anything else in his uh, discography that's kind of like, I mean, does did he ever get picked up by... Uh, I don't know, like other big stars. Like, you know, does he ever get to play on an Elton John record or something? No, he's worked with Mary J. Blige. He's recorded with her. Um, A lot of the rock gods from the 80s um, gone on to work with big stars. There's a guy called Nuno Betancourt from the band Extreme. And he's in uh, Rihanna's band now. Oh, Uh, super. Right, okay. I'm just bringing up Um, my uh, Steve Vai wiki page here now. Yeah. Uh, it was when As recorder of artists such as Public Image Limited, Mary Day Blige, Spinal Tap, I guess that would happen. <laughs> Alice Cooper, Motorhead, that seems that seems unusual. Does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's most I think I think they probably would put most of the uh, I think they would put most of the um, headline catching names in, in, in the top bit, so I assume that's most yeah. of it. Yeah. He's mostly a rocker. <laughs> well, and, uh, those are good is there any, any, any more uh, Steve Vai thoughts you want to leave us with? 
Uh, um, I think everyone should listen to him at least once. I think everyone should listen to him at least once. And I, oh, I actually, know. no. I think everyone should watch him. Even, that's yeah, more I, important. I think. I think. I think. I had. I had stuff to say when I'd listened, but I had a lot more to say once I'd watched him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and also, like, if you said, "I've got tickets to see him next week. I've got a spare ticket. Do you want to come?" Like, oh, and yeah. if it if it was London, yeah. I, I would go with you. I would, yeah. I would happily sit there and think, fucking hell, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, only, the only trouble is, I would also do that if someone was offering me a ticket, but I'm not sure I'd buy them myself. <laughs> okay, so we need a third friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think uh, that's all I've got to say about Steve Vai. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye, Darren. Bye, Darren.